I want to show a little bit of like the ideas that I have when I start a match, you know what I mean? Especially when someone like maybe want to kind of avoid the match, you know, avoid like a, engage the fight. You know? For example, when the person stay in front of you, that's kind of easy. You just like a, he's gonna attack you, you're attacking back, or maybe you attack before him. But if someone is kind of moving away from you, you know what I mean, and you have to kind of follow him, that's that's the idea that I want to like uh, explain to people to don't wait to the other person decide to engage with you. If you have a chance, you just go after him, you know what I mean. So that's why I started the butterfly guard. The butterfly guard, I feel like I can move a little bit faster than if I was here, you know. Mm. So here, I don't know how I can move from that, but here I can just scoop. So you move back a little bit, I just follow it. Mm -hmm. And every time I have a chance, I'm gonna just get a dope on the hook in you. It's special because maybe you don't give your arms, you move your arms away from me, I just get the dope on the hook. Mm -hmm. With dope on the hook, even if the guy is really strong, I can definitely like, I use my butterfly to pick you up. But only that is not gonna give me the sweep. It's giving the control of your weight, the balance, I, I, I start control your balance, but not the sweep yet, you know what I mean? And I'm gonna be waiting for one thing. Not only the sweep, but if, I, if you let me control you, and as soon as I pick you up, I'm gonna be waiting to post your arm on the mat. And probably gonna be forcing that because I'm gonna do this. As soon as I feel your hand comes over my head, I just hit with my arm. And now I do like if it was like arm wrestling. So maybe you move back, I move forward. You move back, so that's what I'm looking for. This is the first hand, second hand just come on top. And now it's a little bit different because I'm gonna do like a, a Muay Thai clinch. So just get a little bit of control. And then I'm gonna start to sit up and then keep putting weight down like this. So imagine the person doesn't want to engage with you. I'm following you, I'm following. I finally got a double on the hook. I pick you up, I feel your hand come. I just hit. Be careful to the elbow, don't pass because the elbow pass, maybe I can lose. It gets really strong if it, some people feel like, oh, I'm gonna just use my elbow and put a lot of weight. But get out of control. It's too much strength, you understand? So I like to stay in the middle. Don't use my hand. My hand maybe it's, it's gonna be weak to control your whole arm, but I like to control like uh, with my forearm, like this. So here, second hand on top. Maybe you come after me, maybe you come close to me. That's when I was like my, my feet to kind of push away again. And then you're probably gonna be riding the line to me, just put away. And I like to use this move, like if it was the only chance I have in a match. So if I feel, if I feel your hand comes towards my head, get in the line that I, I wanna, I have this situation, I just take it like if it's the only chance, just like one move, you know? And I hope like you, you're not waiting for that and just I was finally get the submission. But if that doesn't work, we always gotta have another sequence from that, you know? All right, that was nice. So you've been at the top of the competition scene for like 10 years now. How much longer do you think you'll be competing? I don't know, Jake, but I just don't want to think about, you know what I mean, how much I have to go, you know what I mean? It's just good to do like I with no pressure, you know what I mean? I think that's why like I did, I was able to do good in the tournament because I never think about the pressure when I was going to compete, you know what I mean? I was always thinking about the pressure when I was training there, you know, but now when I was going to compete, I was take the pressure on that side and just focus in what I have to do, you know what I mean? Pressure's not always good, you know what I mean? Did you enjoy competing or is it something that you felt like you had to do for your career or your reputation? Um, both. I enjoy, but a lot of the time I feel I have to do, you know what I mean? Like for example, when I competed at Abu Dhabi of 2009, the one that I lost, Maybe it wasn't the one that I was I wasn't most prepared because it was just when I moved to New York. But I have to do, and just for a small detail, I wasn't able to win. You know what I mean? But very time I compete like, and I wasn't I wasn't really prepared. But you have to because you know it's right there. You have to do. You know what I mean? It's in your backyard. You have to do. You know, it's the New York Open. It's, you're from New York. You gotta do. You know what I mean? So things like that. You know. What fight stands out? What do you have the best memories? Probably in Abu Dhabi 2003, when I was able to 
to meet Shaolin, not because the way it is, but because I was waiting for a really tough fight. Yeah. So what do you want to be remembered for, for generations to come? Um, I think like it doesn't matter where you come from, you can get the fights you want to, you understand? I came from, I want people to remember that I didn't come from a place that have like a, a lot of jiu-jitsu, I came from a really small town that was really far away from jiu-jitsu, but if you really want, you know, you can, you can get, you know what I mean? What do you, what do you want? You know? What's the most important thing to, to get what you want in jiu-jitsu? What's the most important quality? I think like it's a quality for everything. You gotta give like 100%, you know what I mean? If you really want, you gotta give 100%. Do you know why sometimes people give 80% and they think they give 100%? It's just bad because that, that person may be never gonna get what they want, but they already give 80%, you know what I mean? So if you, give a, if you, if you don't wanna give 100%, don't give even 80%. Give like a less because you're not gonna get that far. You know? So if you wanna if you wanna go far, you should give 100%, not 80%. You know, because 80% is gonna just waste your time. You know, a lot of people talk about the importance of balance in your life, but it sounds like what you're talking about is if you wanna be the best, you can't have balance. You're right. Sometimes like a higher level competition, or or if you wanna reach a goal to of a Mundial competition like that level is not the most helpful stuff. You know I mean? But if it, if that's what makes you happy, you know what I mean? Like uh, you should, you know, you should be look for, you should try hard. You know what I mean? This is your train station, your canvas, your metronome, your cable bridge. The steel threads of your past, suspending the blueprints of your future. Your courtroom bench, you pass sentences to all those that accept mediocrity. You traverse the road less traveled, every win, a friendly hitchhiker, every loss, an unwanted stowaway. Your country. Defend what you have built. The natural ingredients in Defense Soap proven effective against grappling-related skin infections. Go to DefenseSoap.com to learn more. One thing that I believe, once you do one thing, we always need to know what is the next thing. Next thing maybe if the guy escape. Next thing maybe if the guy uh, attack you back, you have to really like what you should do next. I have like uh, ideas that I believe like my opponent know. And I believe on that because maybe it's like those mo most common situations that happened to me when I was in the gym training that move, so most of the people react that way. And one thing that I believe like uh, after we attack the arm, like we did before, people are gonna have like uh, different ways to pull this arm. Maybe he pulled the arm back, or maybe he just rolled the arm out. A lot of the time, the fastest way, as soon as I hit this, you just bend your arm and pull your elbow back. But because I start this with like a lot of control, as soon as I lose your elbow, pull, 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 I at least I have like the control of your arm. So from this control, I know you're gonna start to pull back and then get your arm out, you know? So I kinda, I kinda gonna be ready for that. As soon as you pull this, I follow you because I don't wanna lose the control that I have from you. So look what I did. I keep holding this arm, and the other arm that was like a just connect went to the underhook. And this arm, I can keep locking this, or I can switch for like a um, control on this side because I don't want you open this. And as soon as I feel you pull your arm out, I just connect a quick butterfly switch. But I have to, I have to kind of like account your move. As soon as you pull, I'm just gotta be ready to like follow you and connect one move after before you react again. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try, I always like uh, have one move ahead of you. Or maybe I always gonna try have the last move. You understand? So one more time, I pull, attack, I follow you. And then I just like a 
land on my side of it. I do a butterfly swing. Um, and the other, the other idea is maybe when I attack this and I start to lose, this hand can go to this side of your arm. So as soon as you pull your arm, I have an arm control and just finish with the butterfly. I believe like a, we don't need to do something really fancy, but if you just move one more time, most of the time is enough. Most of the time is enough to put us ahead of the match. I don't think I need to like, a, oh, I have to make a huge set it up. No, I have to just like move one more time. You, you do that, I just did a little bit more, you know. And then I, we continue from that. If you do something else, I'm not going to stop until, until you pretty much like give up, give up of like, um, of attacking or give up until you feel like, oh, I have no, no more escape from it. And then definitely like we're going to start to get more ahead of the position. You do one last time? Okay. Check. Focusing so much on competition, do you feel like any part of your life was missing something? Um, a few times I was, I was feel I was missing a little bit of like a, a hobby. You, yeah, know, you understand? So that's why, like uh, today, I'm looking forward to a little bit more like a hobby, like uh, ride a bicycle, um, doing a little bit of like snowboarding. You know what I mean? When I have a chance. So that's what I was missing for a while, but no, but it's, you know, we can do this later, you know what I mean? Right. A lot, a lot of people our age might have focused more on the family, you know, having yes. children or something, but you're so focused on competition. Do you have any regrets? No. No, I think we can do those stuff later, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you should, you're able to focus on the competition that time and then later you can have a kids and do all this stuff, you know. Doesn't have to be in that time that people do. You don't have to do like everybody, you know what I mean? You can do it on your time, you know. That's why I kinda of avoid that's why I kinda of avoid from my hometown. Uh -huh. My hometown was was something that everyone has to do. Like, oh, once you get old uh, old I mean like uh, 18, 20 you find a girlfriend and later you get married, get a kids, find a job, probably before I get the kids, of course. But, and then stay here and just find a place to, every weekend you go hang out, drink, you know what I mean? Right. You know what I mean? That's, I, I always felt like that's not what I want from me, you know what I mean? And I see people so used to, to see their stuff and, and think, and think that's what they have to do, you know what I mean? But I think like, uh, it's not because it's next to you, you have to do what is next to you, you know what I mean? Right. You made your own way. That's what I mean. Everybody's different, so you're looking for what makes you really happy, you know? So just like the move before, I believe I have to be ready for like, uh, your reactions. Even I, I, I attack you, now I know I gotta kinda anticipate what you're gonna do after that. So before, like, uh, you have the ch uh, attack your arm and you have the chance to pull your arm this way or you pull your arm the other way. Especially when the push is more flexible, maybe they, they become to look like, oh, I wanna, maybe the hardest thing because I have, I'm flexible, I'm gonna use the hardest ways to escape. And even it's hard, you can see like a lot of people try that, you know what I mean? So what I mean is like, uh, after I set up your arm over here, instead you pull your arm down, you try to pull your arm over and you gotta be a little reflexive to do this because I'm gonna be putting a lot of pressure and you kinda, you kinda give up and roll from that. And if I wait, maybe you're gonna end on top or at least you're gonna give, like, give me like a hard time from that. And we don't wanna, we don't wanna get ourselves in trouble because we try something, you know what I mean? If you're gonna get ourselves in trouble, you gotta be because the guy tried something, not because you give it to him. You know? So imagine like I attack your arm. Now, instead you put your arm down, you're gonna, 
look away from me. That's the easiest way to they roll. They look away. If you keep looking at me, it's gonna be a hot roll. But if match trick, if you roll roll away from me, the only thing I wanna do, I, I have to stop you to get on top of me. No, no. Just face, face, oh. face. Yes, I, I have to just stop this. So before you get on top, I have to just put my leg on top of you. If you try to get on top of me, it's gonna be just a fight to me put you back. And now from this position, I still didn't lose your arm. I have to just like move my hip back a little bit and scoop my knee under. Just try to finish with the arm. And remember, every time we have an arm bar like this, the arm we have to pull like a towards your leg. I feel like that's the quick, quickest way to make you, you feel like the arm bar. So, one more time. I pick you up and attack you down. You try to roll, my leg just go away. Now, keep this really heavy because I know you're gonna try to get on top. Hold this really heavy and the bottom leg just come underneath and quick lock your arm to, to finish the arm bar. One more time. Attack, you roll. Maybe my leg is stuck in your half guard. You lock. I don't mind of this, but I also I don't wanna keep my leg extended. I have to kind of like bring my, my leg together with you. Even even like I, my leg stuck over there, lock, lock. I still can kind of like crunch and keep keep you kind of like a crunch to don't get yourself on top of it. So just pull this. So same position, just walk the same on back. BudoVideos.com, home of the world's largest selection of quality jujitsu kimonos. Show your roll, Storm, Tatami, Bull Terrier, Venom, and others. Styles from more than 30 top brands in stock and ready to ship. BudoVideos.com, you're only a click away from owning a new gi today. You're changing.
That was awesome. <laughs> Good training, Jake. <laughs> the grip. Good job. <laughs> that grip is incredible. I've never felt a grip like that. Mm. You know, we need to use the grip. Even in the no gear, we have to try to use the grip like a, as much as we can. Imagine like sometimes we get stuck in like those spider guy grip. We gotta use a little bit of the grip with, with the no gear too, you know. Especially when it's dry. When it's the first match, you know, we have a little bit of like a better grip than towards the end, you know. Yeah. So we have to use since the beginning, you know. That's such a helpless feeling when you got this two-on-one grip. Yes, you couldn't break it. You have to break this because if you don't break this, you can't come forward. Right. And most of the time to break this, it's not going to be just like doing it. We have to knock, our, knock away, you understand? And the same thing with the other side. Can you, can you hold mine? Mm -hmm. So you have this control over here. I'm going to try to put you in a position that I can hit. I don't want to just hit wrong. I want to put you like, mm -hmm. you understand? And the same thing. I'm not going to wait you make again because it's going to be hard to break down. So come on in and break the fastest I can, you know, because I know until that I can't, I can't commit to anything because it's not going to be uh, effective or strong, you know, because you have the control. Mm -hmm. I like so much the true one because not only the true one, but I cross the arm, yeah. even if the gear, because it stops the pussy come forward. Even he want to come forward, but if you cross the arm, he he, his angle change, you know. I mean, he, he can't come straight after you. And some people just, expect, even in the most high level, sometimes they get down cross, they still wanna come forward, but they, they don't have the, the right angle, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's a big like part of the game, I think. Right. Get yourself like out of the grip before you, you can, you, you commit for anything after. Mm -hmm. And your rear neck choke lifting the head. Yes. That was, that was really <laughs> nice. You know, I, I I was raised with like a, when I was a teenager, a lot of like a, a good training partner. And I remember my, one of my strongest training partners, he was always one belt above me. He used to open my neck, just go the nose, right? And that was so painful, sometimes bleeding. I don't think that was right. So I figured out, I think we can do the same thing with just the hand on, on the forehead. And I believe that's allowed because you're not hurting, you just, was that grip over here? Mm -hmm. And one more time, you try to use this as a strong grip, you know what I mean? To make open the neck, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think it's just like a, a nicer way to open up the neck without having to go on the nose or something like that. Right. Official, you know? What I mean? <laughs> you don't want to do those kind of stuff. You know? That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Having the chance to spar with someone as accomplished and skilled as Marcelo is not only humbling, but also very inspirational. His gorilla-like grip, super-fast back takes, and his crushing north-south choke filled me with awe. To many, it may seem defeating, but when approached with an open mind, it can be both educational and rewarding. Marcelo has shown me just how high of a skill can be developed as long as you keep training and never give up. I want to thank everybody that supports me to be here. My family, my friends, my coach, my wife, and Steven Siegel, who taught a lot of all the moves that I did today. <laughs> <laughs>